Okay, thanks. Uh, no, no, you're welcome. If you have any question, any legitimate question, you're, everybody is welcome to ask a legitimate question. There is a couple of guys that basically enjoy to be disruptive. Uh, I'm not. I'm sure that you're not. Anybody that's going to be disruptive is going to be ejected from the room. So uh, basically, that's it. Anybody that's going to be disruptive is going to be. So anyway, um, as I said today, uh, first of all, I want to welcome you all. Uh, I'm happy to see you here today. Um, yes, I'd be happy to discuss any pairs or any anything you want to look at. But there is a, 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 an important question uh, I think one of you has asked before about uh, choosing the tray and deciding which you, where you, you are going to train. So anyway, in trying to trade the, what, in trying to trade foreign exchange, I want to show you something. Um, uh, if you, this is for all of you guys that are trying to 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 get into foreign exchange. The most important thing, half your success, 50% of your success, in order to make money, is the methodology, the way you are going to decide on the trade. So 50% of your success is how you're going to trade. It, it could be using the opening range. It could be using the uh, the moving average, whatever or however you want to trade. But this is what I want to show you. First of all, when you are dealing with foreign exchange, if you look at the top left-hand side of the screen, we're talking about the pound can. So basically, you're dealing with two currencies. You're dealing with the British pound as the British pound, and you are dealing with the Canadian. These are the two currencies that you are dealing with, okay? Now, anything that you're going to do, you're going to do to the first pair. So if you're dealing with the pound, and if you feel that the pound is going to go up, you are going to be buying the pound. And in the same instance, you are selling the Canadian dollar. So whatever you're doing to the first three letters, yes, it is part of price behavior. So based upon okay just to, okay since you asked let me just what is price behavior let me uh, let me ask you all the question what is price behavior the the, uh, the 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 term is the behavior of the price or how the price is moving either it is going down or or going up and why it is going up it moves in a specific way this behavior is because it is based upon the perception of the traders. So what you're trying to find out is the perception of the traders. If traders perceive that there is value, therefore they're going to start to buy. If they perceive that there is no value, they are going to, to start selling. Now, you have to ask yourself, where are they going to buy or where do they perceive value? Where do they perceive that the market now is going to appreciate and therefore they're going to buy? And you need to also identify where the traders perceive that there is no value. So the key is your perception or trying to identify the perception of the traders and where they are going to either buy or they are going to sell, okay? just Now, the second thing that you want to do, and let me go back to this point, the way we, as I said, you're looking in foreign exchange percent. Uh, the 
foreign exchange in particular is dealing with two sets of currencies. It's like spread trading. It's what we call spread trading in futures. You're dealing with two instruments. And in those two instruments, this is what I would like you to see. If, for example, we are using an index. So let's say I'm using the British pound index. And there are indices which I shared with you before. This is the index for the British pound. So this is a basket of the British pound by itself. And it, this is how it moves. If now I'm deciding to trade against it, the Japanese yen, so if I insert here another symbol, and let's say the Japanese yen, and now you see two charts right in front of you, right there. And the upward chart is the British pound, the basket of the British pound, and below it here is the basket of the Japanese yen. This is, these are futures, this is, and this is the cumulative of the Japanese yen against all the currencies, and this is the cumulative of the British pound against all currencies. Now, if you are trading now the pound yen, if these are the two pairs you are trading, which is the pound yen, it's basically the summary of those two trades. There is no indicator, so I'm just showing you the price. So if you look at this, if you decide, for example, you want to, to buy the pound, so basically you want to buy the pound right here. When the pound is beginning to move up, because this is the price where the market, the pound is beginning to go up, and here is where you want to sell the yen. And now, at this stage, right there, that is the moment on this day, on this day, at this stage of the game, guys, this is where you want to be a buyer of the British pound. And when we are trying to trade the foreign exchange, and this is why we are, we do this every Sunday, we try to identify the pair, the currency basket that is strong. And we want to buy it. So right here, this is the pound where it is going to go up. Here, this is where the, the Japanese yen is coming down. And when you buy, when you time your trade to buy it at this point, then you're going to gain this trap in the pound, and you're going to make money also on your short. So you're going to make money on this decline like this. And you will see you will be making money when you buy the pound. You'll be making money as the pound goes up. And your profit is widened in the distance between the, the pound and the yen. Because if you buy something that goes up, then you make money when it goes up. And when you sell something and it's coming down, you make money when it sells and it shorts to the downside. So this way, your choice of the right pair to trade is key is about 50% of your success, the choice of choosing the right thing, okay, at the right time. And this is what we do, as I said, every Sunday, and we post it, you can get it on the, on the, on the website anyway, and we we decide, we come now to the second point. Let me go back to the second point, which I was discussing with you in a minute. When we say we are going to identify a, a preference, a point of preference, or a perception where people are going to buy or going to sell. So if you do your choice and decide you're going to buy 
let's say the pound dollar or the pound yen or whatever one of the ones that we are you you want to identify the perception and what do i mean identifying the perception you need to have a price point you need to have what we call a price point and that price point like this here And this is what we call the perception point. This is what is we call the perception point. So the first thing you do, it's a, it's a certain stair-stepping kind of process. The first thing you decide to yourself, which is the strong pair? This is foreign exchange. If you're doing anything else, it's another story. I'm uh, uh, the, the cable, I'm coming to the cable right now. I'll give you the, the, the prices for the, the short the perceptions for the cable and all the stuff in a minute. I'll be happy to answer and give you that, all of you. So if you look here, let's say the 163, if this here, if this is what you're looking at the chart, if this is the picture that you look at the chart, Somebody would say the 163.98 is support, for example. So let's say some of you like to call this support, and it is true. So let's say we call this support. So we are going to come and create what we call a decision-making point or a perception point. If the price is above support, if price is above support, this means that the market perceives that the price is going to go higher. If the price is above support, it is not breaking below support. This means that the market is reasonably strong and it is going to go higher. Therefore, anywhere above above the 163.98, the perception is that the market is going up. Therefore, we're going to keep on looking at opportunities to buy. And we are going to say to ourselves that below the, that below the 163.58, the perception will change into a negative mindset. So once you choose your, what we call the decision making point, or the price action decision making point, which is in this case the 163.98, you're going to say, above it, I am looking to be a buyer. Below the 163.98, the perception is going to reverse, and therefore, the people are going to sell. And by identifying your price perception point, well, when I put a live trade, I will, I'll put it, but I'm not trading live today. But I will show you on the right-hand side a, a live trade on. Okay, so let me finish this, and I'll show you what uh, what I'm talking about. So just give me a minute, because I do this stuff live. I don't do power presentations for you. I, I try to take a live session so you can see me. So just wait for, until I'm done with, and then ask me the question, okay? So basically, guys, what you want to do is a couple of things. First, you're going to choose the pair. First of all, you're looking to buy the strongest, and you're looking to sell the weakest. And once you decide, for example, that you're going to buy the pound and sell the cat, the second step is you identify what we call the decision-making point. Because above this point, you're going to be buyers of the pound and sellers of the cat. Below this point, your perception 
is going to change because now the market is telling you, the traders are telling you that we are no longer going to be buyers of the uh, the pound, but rather we're going to be sellers of the the pound. So if we choose correctly, the second step we identify the decision making points. The third thing that this decision making point is going to give you guys, it is going to identify for you your risk. It is going to identify for you your risk. What does that mean? It means if I'm buying here, if I'm buying right above 165 right there, and my perception or the market is going to reverse if it trades below 164, therefore my risk on this trade is 100%. Therefore, you will know your risk, you can quantify it, and you can immediately change your position and go into the other side in order to make money. So the first step is choosing the right pair, buying the strongest of the strong, selling the weakest of the weak. The second thing, identify the, what we call the decision-making point, because above it, your perception is to buy, below it, you want to sell. And this decision-making point, what it does, it is going to give you and identify for you your risk. Okay? Now, let's do this in a live situation. Let's see if we can do this in a live. This is what we did in last Sunday. Every Sunday, we sit and we go and populate this radar screen, and to me, and this is the key for any successful trader, you have to have these points, these decision-making points. These decision-making points, you have to identify them while the market is closed. Uh, so the most, you cannot come Monday morning at 8 o'clock you wake up and you come in to the market and decide that you are going to make your planning to decide whether you're going to buy or you're going to sell. Unfortunately, it doesn't work this way. So the best way to do this is to go and do your homework when the market is closed. And the only way to do that is doing it during the, the weekend. And that would be either Sunday, Friday, whenever the market is closed, any, any time between Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock and before Monday morning. So if you look here, for example, somebody was asking about the pound. So I'm going to show you this and we we'll go to the chart. If you look here on this, our decision making point, we're going to buy the pound above 161.40. We're going to sell it below 160.77. So these are our decision making points. And the trend change to the upside is the 161. 65. If we look at the daily chart, this is how we set it up. And just to let you know, it comes up. Come on. Some the data is slow. Okay, it's coming in. So if you look here at the chart on the daily chart for the pound, just one second, it's a little bit slow today. Yeah, there is, there seems to be a, there's a, something, the computer is a little, for some reason, slowing down the internet. One second. It's best to be patient with it. Okay. That's it. So if you look at the pound, guys, one of you was asking about the pound dollar, and 
So these are the prices, the decision-making points for the pound dollar. If the pound trades below the 160.72, if, if you see it right there, you see the line, the 160.72, this here it would be our decision-making point. Yeah, I will. And if you look at right here today, guys, you see this. If we, some, let me show you. We were talking about Sunday. Today is Wednesday, okay? So usually when somebody is doing something good and successful, he creates a lot of small cockroaches around that they start coming up and doing this kind of bullshit. So don't worry about it. Uh, if you look at here, guys, we'll kick the, this is Sunday. So we were buying above the 162.70, 17, 160.77, and the next day you will buy the same. So anywhere above the 160.77, all what you have to do if you are looking, and I'm gonna, I want you to see this because this is extremely important. Right here, this is Sunday. Look at this big day. This was Friday. This big day was Friday. We identified our selling point, our decision-making point as 160.72. So anytime it gets below 160.77, we are going to be a seller. Above the 160.77, we're looking to be buyers. Now, you take that decision-making point and you transpose it onto your intraday chart. So we're going to come here, and you place your, and as you can see here, this is the 160.77, this is the 106.77 that we had. Exactly, I'm going to place, the, give you the stop in a second. But this is the point, guys, I want you to see. Once you do the choice first, the second you identify your decision-making point, like what we did here, the 160.77, this is what you did on Sunday. <coughs> Picking the 166, the 160.77, we did that on Sunday, and if you look at the radar screen, you see there it is, the 160.77. So this is a methodology. This is a way how to do things. It's a methodology, okay? You identify, so if it goes, so the radar screen is going to identify for you that below 160.77 you want to sell. We also have it as a line on your daily chart so you can identify it. And we also have it, yes, I do. I'm going to show you in a second. And we also put it on the intraday chart. So whatever I am trading, because once you see something like this, the noise confuses and makes your decision <clears throat> making process difficult. So what you do, you put the line like this on the chart, and this is what you want to see when it comes to be a live situation. Somebody was asking uh, a minute ago. So right here, this is live, guys. Now, I told you that above we are going, and, uh, and this is how we put in this session, we're going to go short below the, the 160.77, if you will. And uh, so you see the market comes down, and it stops at the 160.77. It stops, and you see this green line showing you that it has stopped, it has not broken. What does that mean? If you see the market is going up, it comes down to your selling point, and this is how we put it, support or selling point, whichever you want. It's a decision-making point one. <coughs> Below this, you want to sell, and it holds like this. Does the market want to crash or it's holding? What do you think, London kid? If it does that, it, exactly. So now, Selling for you, for you to go short, is no longer an option. 
Exactly. So selling for you is no longer an option. Now you focus over here. First, because the pound is strong. That's one. Two, it's above my decision-making point. Three, it tested my decision-making point and it held. Then the easy decision is to buy or to sell. It's basically, is definitely to buy. And this is how you want to take it. And you're looking to buy it above the 160 77 and somebody was saying how to is how how to place the stop Alex. Well, you place the stop below your decision making point. You must place your stop based upon a technical point. So you identify the 160 77 as your stop and if you look here on the chart on the radar screen we have planned this is again part of the plan we are going to go short below 160.77. I'll show you. Well, just wait, wait. Here is the short stop. Everything is planned. You have to plan everything because before you come to the session. So your stop, we're selling at 160. Your stop is 160.97, so we're risking on this trade about 20 pips. So each stop, the size of the stop differs from one day to the other based upon the volatility of the market, okay? If the market is volatile, your stop has to be a little bit bigger. If the market is not volatile and slow, then your stop has to be lower, has to be smaller in size, okay? Yes, and you must have one lower time frame, uh, James, because more time frames will only create confusion for you. So if you're happy to trade on a 15 minute, fine. If you're happy to trade on a 60 minute, fine. Just put the decision point on a time frame that you use and focus on that, okay? You don't want any, the market is hard enough. You don't need more too many uh, conflicting things so that you're, you're late on your decision. So right here, guys, if you look at here, just go back and so, so anyway, I'm just waiting, I'm just slowing down, I don't know what they are. I guess somebody's right, we need to get a clue. Anyway, so basically above that you're looking to Okay, how do we choose the, 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 the criteria for the, the price point? The, we choose the, uh, oh wow. We choose the, the price points based upon what we call the chart structure. So anyway, let me finish. So look at this. Now right here it came and tested it twice. It's moving higher. So right here, all what you're looking at is buying and I was talking to, I'm going to give it to you in a second, there was a gentleman called Saeed yesterday, we were talking with him about this trade. So right above the 160.70, Saeed, and you see this move up, this move down, this counter move, this decline, is not a point for you to sell. You see this coming down, it's a point for you to look to buy it. You're looking to buy it because these points are these points are a better buying place because you're above the 160.77. All what you have to do is buy. It. Okay, there was a I, right. Do you know what the PSR is? Do you know what the PSR is first? Because you're asking the question. Do you know what it is? And I'm tired. I mean, if you want to waste time. Okay, so it's a parabolic SR. Have you seen me talk anything about parabolic SAR? It's a stop and a reverse. You know that that's the... If, how could you call this 
a parabolic SAR and you don't know what this software is. Have you tried this software? Did anybody explain to you? It's rubbish, so why are you here in this room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, if you have a blue dot, this looks like a parabolic SIR because it's a blue dot. Don't you think that's a little bit naive? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, we can move on. I mean, it's just... Uh, the idea is, is that you're dealing with people that basically are, I'm not going to even pay attention to them. For the pound today, these are your decision-making points that you see on the charts right there. Now, we don't use any diversions. We don't. The idea, diversions or something like the SAR, which is, uh, the SAR is the worst system in history. What you need to do is just price action. You need the decision-making point that above this I'm going to buy, below this I'm going to sell, okay? And if you use divergence, divergence is subjective. You might see something as divergence, I might not see it as divergence. Somebody might see that divergence as a strong divergence or a weak divergence, then basically uh, it's opinionated. So if it's something that's opinionated, then you cannot repeat it. Because today, if you have a good if you see the market correctly and you can identify the divergence today, you might be able to call it correctly. If the next day you cannot, it is subjective, you cannot duplicate or repeat your decision-making process if your trade is based upon opinions. But if you are buying above 161.50, then every time you're going to buy above 161.50, you can always you can always repeat and you can always measure if every time you buy above the 160.05 you can make money and how many times below it you lose money. Therefore, you can develop a system, you can repeat that system, and you can duplicate it in order to get a consistent result. Uh, if somebody talks about Elliott Wave, Elliott Wave, for example, is brilliant in hindsight. Every analyst can look historically at an Elliott and a chart and identify Elliott Wave to the point. But you cannot use that in a consistent way, in a way that you can repeat it as a predictive value because it is based upon an analyst's point of view. He could be right and he could be wrong. Again, the market, nobody knows where the market is going to go. So what we try to do is to find something that gives us consistency. And for example, I'll show you something. <clears throat> One of the numbers, for example, let me show, let's, let's take the pound yen. Or let's go to the pound dollar because all of you like the pound dollar. Here is the pound dollar. Before we look at the chart for the pound dollar, I'm going to type for you, I'm going to minimize it for a second, and I'm going to type for you here some numbers. And these are the numbers, for example, the 150. I will do, I will, I will do the euro dollar, all of them for you, whichever you want. Uh, if you look at the pound dollar, you look at 159.80, you look at 157. Uh, so 
the gentleman that we're talking about the decision, if you look here, for example, the 159.80, look at this here, the 159.80, the 157.82, okay? And if you look at it, if every time, and you see how this market at these, Thank you. I'm happy. I appreciate that, Sam, and I'll be happy to do. So we, every line that you see here is, as I said, if you're looking at the decision-making points, write the pound as long as the big numbers for us is the 159.80. If you, uh, the second number is the 157.82. And above that, as long as the price is above the 159.80, and the 160.77, then your bias is to be a buyer. Now, is that the question you're asking? I got a little bit distracted. So, uh, uh, I'm sure one of you had a question. What can we go along the, uh, yes, you're looking at the 161.40. The 6140, the number we have, uh, I think is, uh, yes, yes, I'm going to repeat. The, 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 he's saying the around 164. Now, the number that you want to go about in the, the pound, to be a buyer of the pound, is 16165. Is 16165. I'm going to put it for you here. is 165.65, that is a structural point. That's a very strong point, it's a structural point. So above it, you want to be a buyer of the British pound, and you're going to place your stop, and I want you to see this because this is classic. Look at today. Look at today. We went above 161.65 and we came back. If you look at this, uh, Bill, I know you don't understand how we get those structural lines. We, yes, I started. We we were we we did it last Sunday, uh, Brunel, and we're doing it every Sunday from now on. Yes. So next Sunday is going to be there, and the recording is already on the website. You can go and see it. Yeah, we started. I thought I, I thought you got the email. Anyway, so if you look at today's day, guys, the high of today was 161.70, and we came back down. If you look at yesterday, the high was 161.63, and the number we have identified from last Sunday was the 161.65. So what is the chart telling us? It is telling us that they are trying to, no worries, Bruno. But we'll send you the email. We'll, we'll see you next Sunday, God willing. That it is trying to go twice above the 161.65, and it has failed twice. Now, somebody was asking about price behavior in a minute ago. I'm talking about perception. I want you to look here, and I'm going to give you a new lesson in price behavior. The first, we identified the structure point as 161.65. Do you agree with that? Hold on a second, Bill. Hold on a second. Now, I'm going to answer that question right now, So, but focus with me for a second. So. It goes about 161.65. You can consider the structure point as resistance. Okay? It went to 160. The high of yesterday was 161.63. Two ticks right there, which is good enough. And it sold off. What was the low when it sold off from that resistance? So it tested the 161.65, and it came down to 161.65. Or nine. So it sold off about 65 pips. You see that, Bill? Because this is 
the way it tested the 6165 and it was repelled 60 uh, five pips. Today, it went back again up to the 61, but the high of today was 6170, and then they pushed it again, and the low that it was tested today was 6108. So it's pretty much. So as of now, if you're going to tell me now, Mike, if I buy it above 160, 165, where will I place my stop? Where would you buy it right there? Where would you place your stop? Uh, now, where would we place our stop? Should I buy it above 160, 165? Absolutely, I would be buying it above 160, 165. Now, where will I place my stop? If you look at those two days, those two days, here, those two days, yesterday's low, yesterday's low, which was 161.14. So today, we traded below yesterday's low. We went down to 61.70. Now we're back above yesterday's low, and now we're 61.26. Therefore, if you buy above the 161.65, <coughs> then you're going to place your stop below yesterday's low, which we are going to be on yesterday. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, so if now I'm buying above the 160, 165, which I should, and you want to be waiting until Uh, it gets above that structure point, then you can. Uh, so I guess we have nine minutes to go. So I will be buying above 160, 165. I will be placing my stop right below the 160, uh, 72. And this is how you do it on your intraday charts. You come now to your intraday chart like this. And you're going to place, as you can see here, we already, the software outlines it. So, so what you do is, can you hear? You place a line that you can see the 160, and look what happened today. It went above the 160. Right there, right there, when it gets back in your range, you're getting out of the trade. So you would have taken it long here, short there, and get stopped out here. Now, if I'm going to buy again, so you're going to buy over here. This is your buying point. And this is what happened yesterday. See this behavior today? That behavior, so below here, it started to capitulate, so therefore you're going to place your stop right there. So if you're going to, um, should I wait for a confirmation? Okay, I, I mean, if I wanted to tell you that, yes, wait for confirmation, Alex, that would imply that I can foresee the future that the way that I know what the future will do. This here could have equally exploded when it got above the, I know, but the point is we don't know. So it is a decision that comes with experience. What you have to decide right now, should I take it and place a tight stop below here or do I wait? There are no two days that are alike, but 
the simple answer is if the market is going to start racing out of the the, the structure point, I'd, I'd rather be in it than not. Uh, the, co the software, we're, uh, basically, we're going to give it out for free. So anybody that wants the software for free, I'm going to give it to you as a gift. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, about the Aussie dollar, Yes, if it blows, you miss a large portion. Uh, oh, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. You can automate. Let me take a few minutes because we're closing now for this gentleman, uh, the Aussie. Piece. Okay, let's do the Aussie. If you look at the Aussie, Right now, if you see on the chart here, we are buying above 103.35, like that, because this is the structure point right here, the 103.35. We are above it now at 103.40, so we can buy it. You can be long the Aussie dollar above 103.35, and you place your stop. So if you're looking at the Aussie guys, you're looking at buying the Aussie above 103.35. You want to place your stop right below. They might start. I mean, they they need to go. Now, uh, element four, element one. You're asking about the horizontal line and the trend line. There's a big difference between a horizontal line and a trend line. The trend line, the horizontal line, is a specific point. Yeah, I know. So you pick a specific point like this, 120, 102.55, and you put that horizontal line. I am, hold on a second, FX ruined. I'm going to answer your question. I'm just answering the other question, so just be patient. For two minutes, we've got two minutes left. The trend line, if you're drawing a trend line like this, you might decide that this is the right trend line. I might decide that no, this is the right trend line. Or somebody else might say, I am taking this as a trend line, right? So these are trend lines. When somebody places these trend lines, it's very subjective. It is his own opinion. Which one of those three is right? Therefore, if it is so subjective, I cannot depend on it. But if I need something as clear as, what happened here? As clear as the horizontal line, that is what I need because it is not subjective. It is so clear and so obvious, it is fixed in the rule, okay? All right? So I know I'm not sure the, for the top one. Okay. The, the other question that somebody was asking about auto trading. I do not recommend, do not trade using auto system, okay? Do not use auto system. No robots, no, uh, I'll give you an example, uh, FX ruin, and just, just to confirm what Maud is telling you that there is no magic for me. Let me ask you a question. Do you know how to drive a car? Just, do you know how to drive a car? Okay. Now, you are now driving this car, and you are driving on the highway doing 65 miles an hour. Okay? 
Now, you know that you're going to stay between the two lanes. You're going to drive 65 miles an hour, and as long as the traffic permits, you are going to continue doing that. Now, if you come towards the city or while you're driving on the highway, you, you see that there is some brake lights in front of you. Will you still be stepping on the gas doing 65 miles an hour, or will you slow down? Definitely, you're going to slow down, and you are going to change your path. Exactly. So the same thing with a mechanical system. In a mechanical system, the developer of this mechanical system identifies a situation. And in that situation, it works. But if the market changes, if the market, look at this chart, this is momentum to the downside. This is support and resistance. If you look at this chart here, see this? Here, you can use support and resistance. Buy support, sell resistance. Buy support, sell resistance. But right here, if you follow, you must, if you buy, if you sell resistance right here, you're going to lose your shirt. Why? Because the market condition has changed. So you need to change. So having a mechanical system is the secondary part is you first have to know the rules behind your mechanical system, one. Two, you have to know when to apply that mechanical system. So if you have a mechanical system that trades momentum, hypothetically, let's say you want to trade momentum. So, and this is what we do, some people think that Sunday session is a, is a is. so if your system, your mechanical system is momentum, then what you need to do is come every morning, look at the charts, see which pair is going to have momentum, which pair is going to have the condition that satisfies the requirement of your mechanical system, and then you trade it. But you cannot trade the euro every day using the same system every day and expect to get the same results every day. Does this make sense? Okay? Now let's do the euro dollar. And then the euro dollar is basically we have a structure point. You have a structure point. One second, one second. No, it doesn't work on MetaTrader 4. One second, guys. It's just coming up. If you look at the chart, you see that it is trading above the It's trading above the 131.46. Now, as long as we're above the 131.46, your bias for the euro dollar is to be a buyer. Okay? The 131.46 is, I mean, I suggest Mr. Fall Bulls to you to learn how to read. Anyway, uh, when you are looking at the, uh, when you're looking at the 131.46, I'll, I'll be happy to look at the euro yen. Let's finish one at a time. So we're looking at the euro yen, uh, the euro dollar, I'm sorry. 
right here, this is the 13146, which again, you have to ask me where it came from. This is where the market after this big decline has stopped. You want a structure upon something that's a big major event, a major event that has affected the market. And right there you see that this, after it came down a thousand points, this is where it stopped and it moved higher. Therefore, it is a significant point. Therefore, I'm going to put the horizontal line, whoever was asking, and uh, we're going to attest, see how the market behaves on either side of the 31. 46 above high, below it, we sell, and I'm monitoring it. This so right now, it is trading at 131. 92. It is of the. I understand, but one one second, one 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 second at a time. And right now it is sitting at 131.92. So the first question is: Is it above the 131.46? Bill, yes or no? So if it's above it, then you know that your easy decision is if I ask you, where will you short it? Where will you short it? The answer, unequivocally, below 1.3146. And right now you know for a fact exactly your short trade, your sell trade, has now been clearly identified. So right now, since it's above 131.46, you have two choices, either to buy it or to do nothing. Selling is no longer an option. So now we move to the intraday charts, and we begin to look using this information <coughs> to try to make a trade. So if you look at this chart, you can see that it is, this is your 131.46. You see it right there at the bottom. It has identified itself. And you see how many times it tests it. And right now, we are now going to use a second part of the, I wasn't discussing the Aussie can, but I'll be happy to do it for you. Right now, we are below the opening range. So if it gets back inside the opening range, somewhere over here, that means that the bias, the opening range, one of the characteristics of the opening range, I mean, there are a hundred ways to use the opening range. So if it gets inside the, below the opening range, the bias is to the downside. So if it gets inside the opening range and it reverses to the other side, so if it gets up to here, above 130.208, then this is where I'm going to buy it, and I'm going to place my stop below. So the plan now, if I wanted to trade the euro, I'm going to buy above 132.10, and my stop is going to be below 131.95. So right now, yeah, the euro right now is a short, but keep in mind today now you have a uh, the Bernanke coming up in an hour, and uh, you, you can't really expect any movement to be happen uh, to happen into the market. So right now, you just need to be uh, patient. But as we stand right now, if we didn't have Bernanke, if we did not have the, if we did not have Bernanke, or we did not have the FOMC today, right now I would be shorting the euro. Uh, or I'll be looking actually at this. No, I wouldn't be shorting the euro right now. I'll be looking for this as a buying opportunity. I want to see where it stops because it's still above my decision-making point, which is the 131.46. Okay? Uh, what are MPT? What MPT, what's that? 
100 levels are IMP important. Uh, in the old days, in the old days, the round numbers used to be important. Okay, the 13100, the 13200s, the round numbers used to be important. Today, it is not as important as it used to be. It's still significant. It is still used, but the idea is if something is recognized by everybody like this, it will become like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly. So it will be recognized, but it is no longer, in the old days, it will act like serious support and it will act like serious resistance and it will stop the market. But nowadays, it is something that is identified and you just have to keep an eye on it, that's all. Okay, so as you can see here, if you look at the chart of the euro, that's why I was saying, this is what I was discussing with uh, Saeed yesterday, when he was saying selling, they wanted to go short the end. Yes, we are below the, the opening range. I mean, people use the opening range, they don't know what an opening range is or how to use it. But right now, yes, we're below the opening range, but that opening range is a session. You have to decide if below the opening range is a buy or a sell. So right now the trend is up. This is down, and I don't see any capitulation over here. Therefore, there is no selling any longer. I'll be looking at buying it because it's still above my decision making. Okay. Uh, okay. What else? How do I know how long to stay and hold the trade? Uh, that's a that's a brilliant uh, I'm happy thank you Sasha for a second if that's why we have these lines Yes, of course, I do that, AG uh, Pips, and I'll show you in a minute right now the, the position trade. That's what we call the position trading. I'll show you in a couple of uh, minutes. If you're looking at the each one of those lines when you hide the chart like this to the left side, when you hide the chart, you see that these are all decision-making points. And so above it, right here, you want to buy. If it comes below the high, maybe you want to take profit over there. Okay, so all what you have to do is create several decision-making points. You create several decision-making points, and that uh, is your entry or exit where you decide to take the trade or exit the trade. Okay, now let's go to. Anyway, let's talk about uh, AJ Tips. What do you like to trade? Give me a name of a pair you like to trade, and I will show you how to do the swing trade. On. Give me a name of a pair you, you trade. The pound yen. Okay, we'll do the gold, we'll do the pound yen, and we'll do it. So this is, for example, the pound yen. And Again, we follow the same procedure and the dollar index. We follow the same procedure, guys, and the dollar CAD. Again, you see, you see they call the dollar CAD, the dollar uh, Swiss. You have to choose correctly uh, element one. The key is choose correctly. The pound CAD, the dollar CAD is not, they are both very tight together, so you, you're not going to get the spread that you're going to capitalize. You're going to buy the dollar and the cat are equally the same. So, but anyway, if I come here and I turn on the strategy for the swing trade, take a look at the pound cat, pound yen. Look at this. You got a couple of small losing trades which we're going to take, but look at how the big trades are. So the last trade we had <coughs> was from 122.04. And you sold it at 130. 
So you had about 800 pips on that train. So the key, again, is the selection. Element one, all of you guys, I cannot stress enough that 50% of your financial well-being is going to depend on the correct selection of what to buy. Okay? So choose. It's like choose. And then apply. Look at this, for example, here when you choose the, the pound yen here. Look at these trades. This is when the market is correct. Look at this. Every blue line is a winning trade. So you started selling right there. This is the first short. The first short, look at this. From 200, 23, from 223 all the way down, <coughs> you covered your short at 138. You got <coughs> over 10, from 200, 223 yen to 140 yen, you got about 100 yen or a thousand points on that trade. What do you mean what? No, we got out of the, uh, what would, do you mean the uh, correct selection for me? And uh, FMD, I want to show you something, FMD. I don't want you to think that this is, when you have rules, this is what I was talking to the gentleman that FX ruined, whatever it is. Uh, you see, this is a methodology, guys. Which is the, what, what do you want? I'd be happy to talk you through what do you need. This room is still for you, so I'm assuming that everybody is asking a question is a legitimate man, so I have to give him the, uh, you're talking about this one here in the pound yen? There are the percentage of winning and losing depends on, again, this is how we trade. Let me tell you how we trade, okay, so that to answer all these questions correctly. We have a methodology, yes, we have a methodology that 70% of the time is success. All right? What we try to do is to use the portfolio selection of choosing the correct trades, so therefore we can maintain that risk. So for example, if the market is trending down, if here, for example, in this area we have a lot of noise over here, this is how we do it. Let me see. What do you mean break a stop? I'm, I'm explaining something. Guys. If you see here, this is how we have set the, 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 we, if the market is below down, it's coming down, so we're going to say buying, we don't want to use the system to buy. We are only going to buy to get out of our short position. Okay? So therefore, I am only taking the sell signal because the market is trending to the downside. And I'm not wasting my time in taking the buys. Therefore, I save a lot of my losing positions. Okay, and I focus on, the, so right here in this area, I am not going to, I'm going to, because the market now technically has reversed, so I'm going to say right now, because the trend or the bias is to the upside in the pound yen, 
I am only going to be a buyer rather than a seller. So I'm going to cancel my sell signal and I'm only going to take the buy. Okay? Yeah, the Sunday session, again, one of the biggest challenges that I'm trying even to find a way I'm thinking of a way to make everybody to find a way to be able to uh, get more of it. But anyway, your former question was about which do you which do you think would be the best pair to trade? If I knew, okay, uh, okay, let me back up. I was going to make a small remark. I'm not going to make that. I don't know, Ellen. The best way to identify is every week before the market comes, before you start on Monday, you do your selection. So last Sunday, I'm going to give you a, a few, I don't know what the password is. Laura, do you have the password for the last session on the uh, trade planning session last week? Laura, do you have it? Okay, anybody that wants to get an invitation to the next week Sunday session for free is welcome to send me an email and uh, send it to info at training traders and I will send you an invitation for free. Okay, anybody that wants here, send it at info at training traders. Okay. Okay, good luck, Edward. I mean, uh, I wish you all the best. I mean, uh, I, if you go, hopefully you make money and I, have, I hope you're successful. Absolutely, right. Very good. You see, Edward, Edward, I want to tell you something. Uh, guys, guys, I want to tell you something. Uh, so I guess we're, we're up on time. Okay, thank you, Vicky, very much. And thank you all very much. It's been a, I have to say it was an exciting day today. Uh, so we'll do it often. Okay? So thank you so much and have a great week. Yeah, I know. It's just, uh, it's, uh, uh, come on guys. I mean, uh, don't worry about it. Exactly. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. They, are, they have always been losers and they will continue to be losers. Nothing has changed. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care. Bye. See you Sunday. Anybody that wants the Sunday sessions, just send an email and we'll send it to you. We'll send you an invitation. Okay? Bye.